Kubernetes is the technology to learn if you want to land a six-figure job in the tech industry. As you can see here, the average worldwide salary is 158,000 a year. And in this video, I'm going to go through this entire report on the state of Kubernetes jobs in Q3 of 2024. And especially if you are a software engineer that is struggling to get hired, watch this video until the end. So this report is created by Cube Careers. And they, every quarter they come out with a report about where they scrape jobs. And in this data set, they have 1,607 jobs that they have evaluated. And here they, they, the, the, the requirements are that it, the job should require Kubernetes experience, mention a clear salary range, and are listed by companies and not recruitment agencies. So these are companies hiring directly. So as I said, the average pay is 158,000 and the, the range is about 130 and 187. So the minimum is actually an, a six-figure income in the States, which is a very interesting um, observation. And where are the most Kubernetes jobs located? Well, North America, again, has the highest number. So North America or Europe is the place to be if you want to get a Kubernetes job. The jobs have been quite stable, the, uh, the number of jobs, which has been interesting. You see that there has been an increase in Europe, European jobs at the uh, beginning of this year, and then it has basically descended a bit and then stabilized. And in America, there's a slight increase, but it's fairly stable, um, at least. So there's no drop, there's no huge drop in the amount of jobs, which is a very important uh, observation. The average Kubernetes salary in North America uh, is 169000 and in Europe, the salary is an average of, so the minimum is 66 and the maximum is 85,000. So the, the average is about 70,000 here. And that is that also confirms my personal experience as working as a Kubernetes engineer. I was making about 65,000 a year, but I had a company car and some other benefits as well, which is a very comfortable salary when you're living in the Netherlands. Now, one very interesting observation is that the Kubernetes job market is mostly seeking for software engineers. So there are a few things that we can deduce from this fact. So first of all, what's a <laughs> big red flag for me here is that apparently companies are pushing the Kubernetes, uh, the Kubernetes responsibilities to the software engineers. So they think that they can just let the software engineers run the infrastructure and then they can get rid of the DevOps engineers. Well, software engineers are not necessarily interested in running the infrastructure and being on call. So you can see how the, the companies are trying to squeeze everything out of their employees, and you should resist this because it just doesn't work. It, it is stressful enough to write software uh, on, a, on, on a regular basis than if you have to have on call on, mixed in with that as well. When you don't have the expertise, that's just a recipe for burnout. But nevertheless, there's no denying that if you are a software engineer and you don't know Kubernetes, then you are putting yourself as at a disadvantage. Now, how much Kubernetes should you know as a software engineer? It doesn't have to be much. You just need to understand what Kubernetes is, how to, de how to deploy applications to it, and what the thought process behind it is, right? So microservice architecture, why is cloud native development so so such a useful thing to have? Why why do we even want to have Kubernetes? And these things are very very important to learn as a software engineer. And if you don't know anything about it, if you're just focused on writing your Python code and you have no interest in in any of the other things at all, then you are putting yourself at a disadvantage. And if you are interested in learning about Kubernetes, I have a community with tons of courses. We have 380 members all specialized on this topic. And my Kubernetes fundamentals course has been watched by thousands of people and getting five-star reviews. And this will teach you everything you need to know to put your Kubernetes on your CV and which will prepare you for the certifications that are good to get. And in terms of certifications to get, if you are a software engineer, I recommend you go for the certified Kubernetes application developer. This is a good one to, to start with. And if you are more in the DevOps uh, DevOps co corner, 
then definitely go for the CKA and CKS certifications. So as you can see here, the most jobs are for software engineers, but there are also plenty of DevOps and platform and site reliability engineer jobs here as well. Then basically, for the sake of this, um, for the sake of this video, we can just pile all of those together, and then I think when I just make some very mathema very mathematically, scientifically advanced calculations here, I think if you put all of the engineer functions together here, apart from software engineer, you're going to be ending up at about the same level here. But again, still, it's super interesting that software engineer has such a high listing of Kubernetes uh, in, the, in the jobs. And, and, and you can see it here. You can also see it represented in the chart here that the software engineer title, the job title that had Kubernetes in the description has risen like significantly. It's almost doubled, as you can see here. So take heed, software engineers, listen to my words, learn Kubernetes. So in the previous reports, there was this section about remote jobs, and there it said it was like 3% of the jobs that were remote. And everybody is looking for the remote jobs, and then they complain there is such a high competition. Well, if you focus on 3% of the jobs, you're going to have a problem. This time around, they did not have include this statistic. Now they have, uh, they allow some sort of remote work, so it's more hybrid. So I don't know how much value to attach to this statistic now, but it suffices to say that uh, there are still remote jobs available. My advice to you, if you're looking for a Kubernetes job, is to not focus on remote jobs, but instead just fo focus on the, the bigger pool of hybrid or even in-office jobs, especially if you're looking for your first position. Interestingly, there is very few requirements for on-call, which is great. And that's probably because Kubernetes just works so well and it's a self-healing system. And uh, in terms of popular technologies for Kubernetes jobs, then Docker is still, of course, the most popular technology mentioned in the job description. Well, this is mostly because like people who create these descriptions don't necessarily know what they are talking about. Of course, if you're running Kubernetes, you need to run containers and Docker is of course, a standard uh, tech to list on a CV there. But I would basically assume that if you know Kubernetes, you're going to know Docker. But hey, you got to know it. So there's um, a couple of interesting ones is Postgres. So in terms of databases, focus on Postgres. This is what I also say in my roadmap videos and the advice that I give to my students in my private DevOps community. And also Kafka is um, mentioned a lot, which is interesting. Then there's Helm and Redis. So yeah, definitely check the, put those on your CV as well. And Kubeflow is still quite small in terms of machine uh, machine learning and AI development, but um, that is going to grow in the in the years to come. Mark my words. Another interesting observation is that the most popular programming language in Kubernetes jobs is actually Python. I would have expected Go here, especially because it's so focused on the Americas, but Python still dominates. And this is also what I teach my students and what I have shown in the DevOps roadmap that I created recently, that I highly recommend learning Python if you are a DevOps engineer, aspiring DevOps engineer, and to choose Python first, and then maybe learn Go later, but always research your local market to see wh where the opportunities are. But as you see here, you can't go wrong with Python. In terms of CI/CD tools, well, Jenkins still dominates, interestingly. Uh, I personally don't necessarily recommend learning Jenkins just for the sake of learning Jenkins. Research the companies that you want to work for and try to deduce if they use Jenkins because um, I have not, I, I used Jenkins in my first gig, but after that, I've never seen it later in, here in Europe. And of course, there are plenty of companies who use it, but don't just learn it for Jenkins' sake. GitLab is still very popular, but as, as we see, GitHub Actions is rising, and Azure DevOps is also mentioned here. So it's basically just some sort of CI tool, that CI CD tooling that you would need to know as a DevOps engineer anyway. But um, I, I would say focus on GitHub Actions and GitLab. Then interestingly, there is no mention of Argo CD or Flux, and uh, they even... They have Tecton pipelines here, but there's no Argo CD or Flux mentioned here. It's not a CI CD tool as such, but it is a CD tool. And I would have 
I would expect them to actually mention that here. But you can't go wrong with Argo CD, and you can't go wrong with Flux. I personally prefer Flux, but again, you have to re research what the companies you want to work for are using. But um, you can you can learn both of them. They are very similar. Observability, Grafana, Prometheus, the golden standard, learn those. There is literally no other alternative in, in, except for Datadog or Splunk. I mean, they are good to learn, but even if you learn those, you, I still highly recommend just learning Grafana and Prometheus because it's the golden standard. It's the de facto standard. Learn those. And that was the report. So my summary of this is learn Kubernetes, especially if you are a software engineer, if you want to land a six-figure role and the popularity of Kubernetes jobs is stable, if not rising, especially if you are a software engineer. So learn Kubernetes. It's really important and it's super fun. And if you want to learn Kubernetes from me, check out school.com slash kubecraft, where I teach Kubernetes to stu students every single day and many of our students have already reached the prize Cubestronaut achievement, which is something really good to strive for. So thank you for watching and see you in the next one.